this is the agenda for today's session. We'll be discussing about a few uh, news of release, some announcements, and then we'll directly uh, dive into the technical session by, my, uh, by Manik. Okay, and then we'll be also be a quiz round, trivia quiz, wherein we'll be choosing out three winners. We'll be getting um, certification, uh, I think, vouchers. Yeah, training. They can come. Mm -hmm. Certification. Okay, training by news of team. Um, yeah, that's it. I think the concept of voucher has changed now. So you got training and then you automatically get a test chance. Yes. Okay. So about us, uh, we are the local meetup group organizers. So Deshna, myself and Manish. My name is Akshita Savant. I'm currently uh, working at Apesar as Senior Solution Consultant and also Ambassador. So moving on to next, uh, Manish. Yeah, so uh, I am Manish Yadav, currently working as an integration architect uh, for Billenium. I have a five plus year experience with the MuleSoft. Uh, yeah, I'm leading uh, Mumbai group along with other two leaders. Yeah. So, hello, hello, everyone. I'm Sudeshna Mitra. I'm a technical architect at Accenture, and I'm also the MuleSoft ambassador along with Manish Chitai. Uh, uh, we are organizing the meetups for more. So, thank you for joining once again. So, uh, we haven't done the introduction session. Do you want to do it now? Uh, so, basically, we will uh, uh, five to ten minutes from now. Uh, basically, if someone are interested to introduce themselves if they are new to the news of meetup, if they are joining first time in Mumbai group, or you know, uh, so. At least they can introduce themselves uh, if, if they wanted. So if anyone new and they wanted to introduce themselves, they can unmute and introduce to us. So basically, what we are expecting in the introduction, what is your expectation from the meetup? What you are expecting from this presentation? And why did you join? You know, what drive you to join Mulesoft as a technology or as a iPass platform, whatever? So what driver you have or what drives you to join Mulesoft and uh, yeah, so this thing we are expecting and how much experience you have. So anyone want to uh, introduce themselves, they can unmute. Uh, Purva, Purva, mm -hmm. she wanted to... Uh, Let me unmute you. Mm -hmm. You can speak up, Purva. Okay, anyone else who wants to um, introduce themselves? Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Gopi. Uh, I'm currently working as a Java developer, uh, uh, transition uh, into the uh, Mule shop. Uh, so I have previous um, experience in ETL uh, tool Informatica also. So I'm uh, interested in integration part. So I chosen this uh, uh, as uh, uh, useful tool in the future. So I started learning it. That's all. That's nice. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, yeah. Who's this? Hey, uh, Manik here. Uh, I think my Chrome just. Window just got whitened out. I'm gonna re-log in. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It happened with me also, Manik. So yeah, I just okay. re-log in again. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody else who is joined our meetup for the first time? Please introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. I can see a lot of lot of name are quite uh, 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 not new. I would say, I think. Yeah. Mm. Sorab, Sorab this book. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anybody who uh, has joined from US or some other country? 
Akshita or Sudeshna, is, is it okay if I uh, mention one online event here? Because before disconnecting, I heard someone, I think Gopi, he is in Java and now transitioning into Mule, right? Yeah. Correct. So uh, that reminds me on uh, on 15th of October on online uh, meetup group, we have a special event, uh, which by Alex, so he's one of the Salesforce Alex architect, Mule. right? Yeah, uh, so mm -hmm. that is more focused towards the Java professionals who are going to transition into MuleSoft. So he's going to talk about how getting MuleSoft will help you for your Java uh, as a Java professional plus the integration capabilities into your resume, right? So you might want to check that out. Sorry, uh, sorry to cross over. Just mm -hmm. like I heard a Java professional no, no, turning into yourself. You can also that, share. Yeah. Manik, you can also share your um, meetup link in the chat. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll, sure, I'll I'll send that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
nothing to do with MuleSoft itself. So it's not by MuleSoft. MuleSoft has no relation. It's purely personally made by me, and it's an open source tool. So just it is very targeted towards the Mule applications only. That's the that's the only relationship. Otherwise, it has no relationship with MuleSoft. Just to make it clear that nobody should take it as a, like a something coming out from MuleSoft them, right? Uh, with that, um, an introduction about me. Uh, like I was saying, I'm a technology architect at Avio Consulting. We are a MuleSoft partner here in US and um, very niche with the MuleSoft integrations only. So that's me being in IT for more than 14 plus years now. I'm in MuleSoft community ambassador like Shravan, Sudeshna, Manish, um, um, and um, uh, Akshita too. So we all are part of that group. Uh, I have presented at various meetups, Connect. I am integration architect certified with API design. I do like uh, interacting with communities, so you will find me on meetups, forums, blog writings, and all those part. I have created online meetup group, and I am a co-leader of that right now. We have like a four leaders uh, covering all different time zones, like one for you Australia side, one in the EMEA, so we can cover multiple time zones for more people, right? Uh, do you still hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I think I think I, uh, some background noise stopped, and I thought whether I got disconnected or what happened. Okay, sorry. Let me go back. Present. Uh, Okay, so um, I do write blogs at javastates.com. That's my personal blogging site. I keep writing on that one. The entry point, manik.mother.me, it's my just site. If you go in there, you will find all my links, all the sites and everything uh, from that point onward. So that's why that's an entry point. So that's about me. Uh, the agenda for this this particular presentation will be the problem, the approach, the outcome, the demo, and and then at the end, what do you think about it? Whether it's good, bad, whatever it is, right? Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, yeah. So the first one, the problem. I think I don't have to go over Mule applications because we all are in Mule, so we know what application, what how does Mule applications look like, what do they have, and how do they work. The one thing that I'll mention is there are so many flows and subflows. Our applications they can have n number of flows, different logic. If you really follow like a um, single responsibility pattern, usually you will try to give a single responsibility to your each subflow or flow, not having so many things in there, and then you end up with that all chained subflows in your main flows, and every flow is doing some part of it then it, it just grows it just grows right uh, it keeps growing until the point where you have like so many subflows in there and flows and then you kind of lose track of who is calling what and if if this is the application and if i'm debugging okay i will go on this first up oh, sorry i will go on this first flow reference hit f3 and then go on find okay it, it is calling maybe subflow level one then again hit f3 here to find next one Again, hit F3 on this one to go here, and by that time, I am completely forgotten. Like, what was the first subflow that was calling this one? Or if there are multiple flows calling the same thing, then every time hitting the F3, 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 which takes you deep into the well, and then there is no point of coming back and trying to find okay, which flow was actually I started with, or what other flows are calling it. So it's a lot of um relations between the flows and subflows and those those were one of my first problems like i have seen and little bigger applications where analyzing that and looking at the all those relations was difficult every time hit f3 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 go in lose the track go back eventually go back to the xml format and then try to do one text search finding out all my that uh, text in the all the applications and then trying to find out okay which who is calling what so it's all that that was the primary problem i had at least to find out okay how all these my code lines that flows and subflows are related to each other right uh, we have so many connectors modules in there again 
TV, VM, Salesforce, whatever you have, they can be they can be all over the applications to find out where they are, how they are being used, which flows are using all those. Um, obviously, you can use the AnyPoint Studios um, UI mode, and you can see it there. Uh, but again, goes back to the same problem when to visualize how all these things are connected with each other. Right, that's 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 another part of that problem. Uh, how does message flows through all of this? So, like I was saying, it starts from here, goes here, comes here, goes there, goes here, and from here it goes here or here, and like all that. How do you, without debugging all that, without hitting F3 and all that, how will how do you quickly look at it and tell, oh, okay, this is what happening. This is how my message is gonna start from here, here, and this is the line it's gonna follow. Visualizing all that, right? That that is another problem of it, and you have a lot of things in there. Okay, so that's some of the problems, um, at least the ones that I, I thought um, are uh, more, more strong and something should be done for it. How did I approach about it? So let's think about the graphs. Um, I, I'm sure most of you have already seen graphs in different ways, um, either as a graph, as a technology, or some examples, some diagrams over the internet and everything. So what, what are graphs? Graphs are something like this, where you have nodes, you have vertices, you have directions, you have weight. So A is connected with a B, these are vertices, these are edges, and it shows A is calling, like it is going towards B, this is the direction of it, then B is going to C, C is going to C1 and C2, there could be weights on the edges, and you can say, okay, this has more weight than this one. So graph graph can give you a way to visualize a certain lot of things, right? Like graphs are used everywhere. So it can tell you how your different things within the system are connected to each other, how they interact with each other, or how they are related to each other. So what I thought was, okay, let's take this same, same concept and see if we can create graphs for, for our Mule applications in there. So you can think of all these nodes as different modules components and then they are all related to each other they call each other so there could be directions and there, there is a sequence in which they call each other so there can be weights to all those calls in there right so we could probably use the graphs for it uh, let's see then what happens then vertex edges direction and then eventually mule got into that uh, mixture and then this is what i said like what what is the is this all gonna work like is it happening no probably uh tom cruise said yeah i, I can do it so then i proceeded right uh so that's the approach then what i did get the graphs to draw a relationship between my flows, subflows, connectors, modules, so I can pick up, okay, this is my main flow, this is the main flow, it calls this subflow, that subflow again calls multiple subflows in there. So I can create all that graphs uh, of all these, all, every component that is inside your Mule application, and then show that as a graph, which will tell you how the things are flowing through your application. And probably without hitting F3, without looking at the, source code everything within like maybe 10 seconds looking at the diagram you can easily see oh this is what is happening this is http this is going into this flow this is going into that flow obviously it will not be a hundred percent of your application because if i won't be putting the whole xml source code into that diagram it won't make any sense this is more to give you an highlight or idea of how things are happening on high level into your applications, how different flows. If you are following all the best practices, naming your flows correctly, having single responsibility pattern in there and, and um, all the clean flows, then looking at the diagram, you should be able to quickly identify, okay, it is calling a subflow um, inserting database. So you know, okay, this guy is gonna insert my products into database or this one. Uh, fetch inventory uh, from uh, system API. So you you would know that this guy is going to go and call my system api in there so but at least it will give you a very good understanding uh, of your application right so with that what happened was a tool that came out 
is a mule ft it was previously when it started it was called as a mule flow diagrams for first i, I think first four releases but um uh, after fourth release by the time by that time i realized it's so to verbo's name mule mule uh, flow diagram so i renamed it to mule ft again is a short form mule flow diagrams and what it does it's a tool that can scan your mule projects generate diagrams such as graphs of your mule application code such as graph because i have on the roadmap or in the pipeline to eventually generate different types of diagram for example sequence diagrams also oh, which may not have all the details as graph but maybe some some form of sequence diagram showing how the flows are going it's just a different representation the graph can also give you the current diagram will also give you the same uh, same understanding of your application it's just a different layout uh, when we talk about the sequence diagram right but for now it's not supported it's only the graph is what is supported in there so that's the outcome of um, th this whole thing and this is an example this is a diagram generated uh, for one of the application in here right and you can see it has an http uh, Manik, sorry could you please uh, uh, expand maximize yeah. the, the mag yes so yeah hold on uh i think in, in the presentation mode it is not doing that so let me get out of the presentation mode maybe hey just right click on uh, uh not for money screen right right click on the video and no controls you will get the full screen option uh on here oh. money not for you uh, it is for participants for you it won't come you are already sharing oh, okay, the full okay. screen yeah and uh, so this guy maybe again wow well, i'm trying to zoom in and it's going reverse mode uh, is it visible yeah much better okay. I have an uh, uh, okay. Uh, probably this is better. So this is the example diagram that I was showing there, generated for one of the test application. And what in the output it shows is okay. I have one HTTP which is listening on say hello. Uh, it is calling the test app flow, which then internally calls my subflow level one to. Th these are just the names of the subflows, right? These are name of name of the subflows. So it calls this subflow. Then it is uh, th these things are actually defining the sequence in which the calls happen. So it is first calling the subflow one, and then it is calling this test hello app flow, which is a flow, not a subflow. So it is calling that flow and then the relationship continues showing how each of these flows or subflows calls others flows like this this flow is calling this flow first then it is asynchronously calling this another flow then going in here and like it continues i mean it will go to every every component and it will draw all that component so this guy is calling again this subflow and it is also calling a database select um, connector in there, right? So this one here is interesting. Here it shows I have another HTTP which is on say hello to, which calls test hello app three, which the flow looks like it's publishing to a VM connector with this on this VM queue message to processes, and it can clearly show you. This guy is publishing here and this guy is consuming it here. So you just looking at this, you know, oh, I have a VM, this guy is posting and this guy is consuming. So it, I don't have to go in the XML, pick up the queue name and then search in the XML, all my application trying to find out where is the consumer for this, this queue, right? That's what usually, at least I have been doing if if I don't remember which 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 flow is consuming from this one or which flow is publishing to this one. 
so then find the queue name search in the text and then go for it so it can show you the relations or the links if there are asynchronous or the connector hops like your pub one guy is publishing to vm and that is consuming so it can show you that things too uh, and uh, some things in here are the recursion so this this guy is um, this guy is showing okay there is a subflow called a subflow loop who is calling itself so there is a recursion whether it's intended or not not intended that's up to you that's your code but at least it will tell you okay there is a recursion in this particular flow which is calling itself and there is one subflow named subflow unused in my test example and it nobody is referencing that it may be unused so don't take it this one as like a hundred percent realistic unused it is just represented as that because i couldn't find any flow referencing that subflow it could be an opportunity to find out what is an unused in my applications right so it can show you that um at the bottom this is just a legend telling you how all these things are uh, in the flow these this is a this is a flow representation subflow unused flows flow a calling subflow one this shows you the call sequence and flow c asynchronously this dotted gray line here goes here shows flow c calling asynchronously to flow c1 these are the sources and the flow or the subflow calling itself like a recursion right so this is the outcome of um, executing the tool on one of the test application uh let's go back we will see in the demo more how all this is so done. so Manik, i have one quick question uh, yeah so if you if yes, you right. go to the vm like you have a vm in the flow diagram right and yeah can yes. i also get yeah. the queue name uh, in your flow this is this no, is the no, but, this yeah, is the but I, name. if so i have kept this queue name in property file does it also visible to the flow diagram uh that's a good question no because mm -hmm. it's a static code analysis right it's it's you can you can treat this as a static code analysis so that's a good one i can take that as a <laughs> uh, <laughs> feature request thanks <laughs> uh thanks uh okay sorry i was just writing this down uh yeah but right now no it's not it's not parsing your properties file so it is uh all what you have in the um in the xml written there so if you have a property file um it will a property name defined there as a queue name that property name will get up here here as a as a queue name not really the resolved value of that thing right uh, but that's a good idea. Thanks. Uh, okay, so this was the outcome in there, and uh, we'll move to the next one. We were here and here. Okay, so we saw one example, uh, but what are the features? Like, what all these things give? Most of these I already explained you in that diagram. It helps you to visualize your mule flow dependencies and data flows. Um, so that you know what we just saw in that diagram, how different things are connected and how if i send a request on this http if i if somebody calls uh, this http say hello what could happen i i quickly can get an idea of okay if i post in here i know it's gonna go here 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 and then then db select a lot of things will happen in there right so i get an, a quick idea about that one then um if 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 I have to generate it only for the single flow, not for the whole application, I can do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I can uh, identify unused flows and subflows, the one I was showing where it has a um, grayed out flow. It can tell you what is unused. Um, this one I, I like the most. It can tell you the spaghetti situation. So this is a small example. The diagram was neat and clean. I have, I have done diagrams on complex application where the generated diagram was a whole spaghetti of flows and nodes going from here and there so it can help you identify if you are in that situation and your code or code is going growing 
towards probably an unmaintainable state where it is having like a so much responsibility in a single application maybe it 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 all it all depends on what you think is right and wrong right probably not an silver line in there um like i showed in there synchronous 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 it can help you find out all that um in your application connector dependencies what connectors you are using because there are a lot of connectors which are identified by this tool i'll explain later how it identifies and what are connectors it knows and it doesn't know and all that possible recursive flow execution so if there is any recursion and you wasn't expecting any recursion there uh, you can find it just to keep in mind like i was saying to manish's question this whole thing is a static code analysis it cannot tell you what will happen at runtime right so runtime is not considered in this it's purely looking at your xml looking at your source code and then doing some analysis and <coughs> creating the diagrams out of it excuse me so, so, so don't i mean just because yeah, so, it has um, um, sorry manik uh, so, so there is one question from hitesh in the chat uh whether this mule ffd uh, uh, work mm -hmm. for mule 3 or not uh, is it also applicable for mule 3 uh it will mm -hmm. yes it will work i'll show in the demo also uh it will work for the mule 3 too so yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll show in the demo in that right uh thanks uh then yeah detect all the possibilities and then let's go to the next uh those were the features so the last point i was mentioning there are certain things which compose which this tool knows and can identify and certain things because the ecosystem continuously grows right it continuously grows and just like any static code analysis tool as your static components grows you have to keep updating yeah uh, your tools for it so for now this component does recognize all the flows subflows flow reps all the scopes try cache async for each and all this so the way they it it does for scopes is if you have scopes it will go into the scopes and again find out what what you have in the scopes right and it's continuously evolving it's not like an um, if you see it's right now only 0.7 version so it's not like an 100% done with it it's it's evolving almost every week routers it it recognizes all the routers and it can go and find out what all different things are going via your routers some known connectors like database uh, probably salesforce and like um, uh, vm so many in the connectors are by default known uh and there is an ability to register your more connector so if you have any custom connector in there and uh, it's by default it won't appear in the diagram because obviously that tool doesn't know it right so there is a way for you to register your own connectors into the um, uh, tool and then that point onwards tool will start putting those connectors into the diagrams right uh we, we'll see in the demo now so, i think uh, so Manik, uh, sorry we have a two that, question in the chat and this is how we so uh, yeah, the first question from Pratyusha, uh, she has a question regarding whether this tool mm -hmm. internally use XML, XML tag to present the subflow or connector name or how it works internally, I mean, in short, like how you are, yeah. So it, it is exactly same, the mm -hmm. full qualified namespace of a component that appears in the xml itself for example db select in your xml db is the namespace of db connector right so db is the namespace and then the select whatever the next so db colon select is a fully qualified name of the operation the same thing it does and identifies because that is the most reliable way to identify that is how even the mule is finding it out right like it's a typical xml defined um uh, xml with an xsd and everything is predefined in there so yes it is using the xml tags uh including their namespace and the operation name so like db colon select so it's a db database of db database yeah. connectors yeah. Yeah. so I'll, I'll take two so, to three minutes more because i can see two to three more question in the chat mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly yeah go ahead, so go ahead. Before we uh, jump there the, is one question you know. from hers mm. Uh, does it work 
a pun just mm -hmm. on one XML or can we create flow diagram of multiple XML only? Okay. Uh, I, I will hold on to that question uh, for the demo because I I am guessing now most okay. of the questions okay. will get answered in okay. the demo okay. too. But so yes, another but question for this one. Uh, does this tool give any recommendation like wrapping HTTP connector in until successful or no? Mm -hmm. Any recommendation like you, if it is okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, 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 no. That, those are two different uh, responsibilities, right? Like the one that is that she's asking is more about the linter. Linters, uh, linters will tell you. Linters will have some rules. Follow those rules, and if if you have a certain recommendations or patterns, so those are new linters. And I think linter is not part of this tool, so it will not tell you uh, whether you have a right code, wrong code, or any recommendation for it. There are better tools for it. There is one new linter, and I think there is um, probably I'll just mention um, uh, there there is something coming up for um, new linter from um, my company too. So. We'll keep watching the space, and if something comes out, I will share. But uh, long story short, for this one, this this tool mm -hmm. will not tell you anything about the linting, like any code and anything. This is purely showing visualizing. Thanks, thanks, Monica. I have one more question. Code. Last, I would say. Uh, so uh, Mohit has yeah, asked uh, that can yeah. you give me some light about what type of graph theory you have used internally to depict whole. Uh, graph or whole diagram of the mule application like what graph theory in terms of internal feature uh, or something like i don't i mean probably not so much um, deep in into the graph because these are very simple the real graphs will have a more complicated structure in there comparatively ours are very simple so i wouldn't Say there is any specific theory. I do. I do use uh, some other tools like a graph viz. I am so re from representation wise, I can show. I can say that I am internally using a dot language, uh, dot language, and then the graph viz tool, which can which helps you to write the representation in the dot language, and then you you get that dot language file. It's like a specification. You write that in, convert all that data into the dot specification, specified data structure, and then you give that data structure to uh, dot, dot engine. Sorry, then, then you give that, that generated a dot file to a dot engine, and dot engine will convert that whole thing into a diagram. That's like on high level happens internally. But probably, yeah, I mean, that's more if you want. The source code is uh, all on the gate. Like, feel free anytime to just go in here, uh, Mule FD, and get yourself into the source code, find out how it is doing, even any uh, sending PRs, anything. It's an open, typical open source. You can go do whatever you want in there. If you find anything wrong, feel free to send issues or bugs or anything. I'll be happy yeah, to. Yeah, so one, one more question. And I think right? I have the same question, but someone has asked uh, Abhijit. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking to ask the same question to you. Uh -huh. Yeah, thanks Abhijit mm -hmm. for asking. So the question is, how does this tool mm -hmm. identify global error handler in MuleFlow? Does it also identify the any error handling while scanning the uh, uh, it 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 still uh, probably it may not because there is no link uh, global global error handlers you define um, if you are not referencing into the error handler it won't know it uh, it won't identify that like I was saying it's a static one if you just have a global error handler defined in the configuration like a no reference in down there it won't find it so. I would say probably it won't. That's a good one, which I will just check later. If you that how, to it, then it will. Sorry? In the I, mean, I mean, if you are referencing to the error handler, then it will show, right? Uh, this I, is what Suresh Niger. Yes. Yes, yes. If you so yeah. think of this, and anything that has a links, anything that scanner can see that oh you are going from here to there there to there there to there anything that scanner can see it will write it down there if anything has no visible it, it's it's same as how the google search engine goes right it goes from one side to one link to another link as far Why as it's just can like see, it keeps scanning and going writing 
in but new also a... global airline and we won't be able to see in exactly. the presentation unless and until we yeah right because yeah because it's it's like something happens or synchronously something happens completely out of your own logic like it's something taken care by runtime engine itself right and even the mule mule uh, that graphical view won't show like you are saying it won't show you that because it it, it only happens at the runtime more yeah yeah okay so i think we, we should yeah i think let's see it in action uh, so the demo part first three are done so let's go into the demo right the very first thing so we will take up the questions please keep writing in the chat everybody so we will take take up the questions yeah, yeah. The demo, i think lots of the questions get will get answered yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, first thing, I, I'll just drop this link in the chat here. If anybody wants to just go in there, but this, if if you go in there, you will see a lot of installation app options, like how you can get this tool on your system. If you are using um, uh, Apple or Linux, like a Mac or Linux, in there, you can use SDK Man, which is one of the tools that I use to maintain uh, installations on my system, right? So you can get the install SDK man in there using this one. And once you have SDK man, you can just do SDK install MuleSoft, uh, MuleFD, right? MuleFD, and it will go and fetch the latest version. It will get it. If it if I if you want to upgrade, you can always upgrade. Um, uh, uh to the latest one sdk upgrade new left it will up upgrade it to the new version in there if you use that if you if you are just purely using homebrew um brew to manage your um your tools you can do this brew install manik mugger tap new ft so it will again get it from there um it will go and get the tool from there it's getting it's getting it's getting come on <laughs> So it's updating, probably it will say, I already have the tap registered. Yeah, I already have the tap registered, but once once that is done in there, it, you will have um, MuleFD installed and you can always upgrade it to the latest one, where you upgrade MuleFD and it will update, update in there. I already have the latest version installed in there. Uh, if you don't want to install, you can always use the Docker to Docker run dash V PWD app. So this is like, um, you run the Docker and PWD is like whichever application you are in. So if I if I basically go into uh, FT example, so if I'm here, right? Uh, uh, let me know if the terminal is not readable or visible. Okay. So if 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 I'm here and if I run that Docker command in this in this in this um, command line what pwd will do is it will mount that whole folder into the docker and the diagram will generated will get generated for this particular folder so that's how it works if you are on windows if you are on windows you can still use something called as a scoop which is a command line installer for windows you can install scoop once you have once you have scoop you can go scoop bucket add manik mager and this is the scoop bucket id there and then once you register this bucket with your scoop, then you can scoop mule FD. It's like ice cream scoop, right? Like just scoop out of it. <laughs> scoop install mule FD and then scoop up scoop update mule FD. It will upgrade your mule FD. So you can install that way on the Windows too. If nothing works, always you can go get this library, uh, get this repository and build it yourself and use it from the bin folder. It uses Gradle, so you can get it. Gradle is zip and it will install. So all the installation things are in here. Um, all the instructions are there, so you can always get it from there, right? So now executions. Uh, let's go back here. So very first thing, if you do mule FT with no parameters to it, it's a CLI tool, right? It's a CLI tool, so everything on the command line. Uh, what it says is you don't have source path, so you have to specify what, where is your application or whatever the code you are trying to generate diagram for. Diagram type, right now it is only graph, 
it goes to the point where I was mentioning, I have an intent to generate sequence or something else, but right now it's only the graph. There are other, other um, options. It's like flow name. Uh, if I have a big application and I just want to create a diagram for a particular flow, so in that case, it's possible. Like if I um, uh, if I go in that same diagram in here, and if I just want to see the diagram for this particular flow onwards while generating, I can say, okay, flow name test hello app flow one. So it will only generate basically this much diagram, nothing else. It will it will probably uh, yeah. It also includes the previous connector. So it will also include the VM message so that you can see VM is pushing into the, this flow and then what happening after that, right? So it will it will show you all that with the single flow. Generate singles. So you have a big application. It will generate a one big diagram for it. It may not be always helpful. So if you say, okay, generate singles for two. So what it will do is it will generate that whole diagram plus for every flow type. Okay, starting with the flow, it will generate individual diagrams for it. We will see in the demo too. Out file name, by default, it generates the mu diagram.png file. You can always change the name by giving the name and where you want to generate the file. It always generates in the current directory, but you can specify a different folder to generate that file, right? Uh, okay, with that, let's just see how it happens so i'll go into my mulet oh i think i am already in there you know, examples right um this is the application and test hello app in here so this is this is the same flow that i was showing earlier how it goes in in there right in in all this flow so one way to generate that is I can go either in there or I can directly mu and test hello app XML. So I can generate for this XML in here specific. If I hit enter, it just goes reading source file. It is reading there on the logs. You can see it detected one self loop in that flow. And then it eventually generated a diagram in here, which is in the same same folder. So like I was saying, where, wherever your target source path is, it will generate the diagram in the same folder in there. So I hit in there. And this is the exact diagram that we saw uh, during the presentation also, right? What happens in there? Uh, okay, whatever I was supposed to explain like right now here about what you have in the diagram, I already explained you when we saw this diagram earlier, all the recursive loops and everything. So probably I won't explain that one again. The other, other part um, in there is the single flow name, right? So GS, what just now it generated, it only generated one diagram, but let's say I want every, I want an individual diagram for every flow. So I will say, okay, dash GS, so give me the singles. And instead of generating in that directory, SRC main mu generated in the current directory. And I hit enter in there. So now if you see, there are more like single flow diagrams. It is generating single flow diagrams for every flow that I have in there. And if I basically open it here, you can see a folder name, uh, new folder it created, single flow diagrams. This is our typical consolidated diagram. It will always generate that consolidated diagram. But at the same time, uh, here, this guy, single flow diagram 11, 10, 11, 10. So this guy. So these are the diagrams that it generated in there. So as you see, there are like three flows in there. So it generated a flow three, a flow one, a flow one. So if I go back to the XML, I have this guy, test hello app flow one. Then I have a test hello app flow one one in here. And where is the other one? Oh, that might be the old one. Let me see. Test hello app flow one. Okay, which one it picked? Hello app three. Okay, test hello app three in here. So see, this is the thing I don't. 
get from here. One, three. Wow. Okay, maybe someone else is connecting to this guy. But this is the flow. Test hello app flow three dot png. It picked up and it showed you everything that is happening between this and the other part. Same way, test app hello one. So this is the app hello one in here and it's showing you everything that is connecting to that particular flow in place. Then this is app flow one. This is the app flow one and I was saying, okay, it will show you everything happening after that plus the one before that like who is connect as a source so this vm is defined as a source in there so you can see the source coming from there and it's going where right so that is the generate singles it, it can generate single diagram for every flow in addition to the consolidated this is more useful if you have a big application and there are like a lot of flows and subflows there and uh, your consolidated diagram is just too big to realize really what is individual flows are doing so you can use that one the other other part uh, is about flow names right so if i give like a uh, flow name of uh, this guy again the test flow app this one test flow app right and i can say okay generate in here so it is only going to generate for that particular one one die. And in this case, the image name is not mule mule uh, hyphen diagram. It's the name of the flow. So you can generate for that particular one flow. If I go back here, here. So this is the individual diagram for that flow, which it generated and put it out there, right? So that's, you can, do let me see what else i have in there so that's uh, yeah so those are the those are the different options for the command line you can generate for the single flow or individual flows or everything now what happens if you have an api project in there right like and it has all the api key and actually the more we all keep talking about the api so this one was like a simple integration application doesn't have any api key in there and everything api kit is a special use case because there is a lot of code <laughs> probably written as an api there so if you have an api code what it will do is um let's see src main mule and test api so if i go back to the source code here and here so i have an api I haven't tested simple API. There's an API Git router and it has basically a couple of flows going to put users, get users, get users by user ID, get post users and a test subflow. So it has all the API implementation going into different uh, methods. Those flows again calling other flows in there. So what will happen if I, if I generate a diagram for this one, how good of it will be to tell me what is happening, right? So if I generate this guy here, uh, mule FD, and I'm giving a test API dot XML for this one. So it started generating the diagram and it generated the mule diagram dot PNG, the default name. I can you can always change it. And now if you see what it's showing me is okay, in this app I have two flows: test API main, test API console. One is listening on HTTP API star another HTTP console. So it immediately tells me, oh, I have a console enabled, which is probably not suggested. I don't, I never keep consoles uh, in my applications, just turn them off. Uh, so it tells me, oh, I have a console, I'll just turn it off. Then I have an API kit router with a test API key config, and it is going to all these flows like API kit config going to post users API config, get users config, get user test config, and put all this and this all by just by simple API thing in there, they are all calling this subflow and they, that subflow is going in here. So it tells me how my API is, API is what it is calling and where the code uh, is going in there. Right? So question it, I have. It, it, it can uh, identify API. What if uh, anybody comments out, like uh, normally I have the practice yeah. of commenting out the HTTP console. Uh, so will that still be shown in the graph? No. 
it it will not it will not be shown in the graph because even even by xmls uh, by any xml parsers parser will never pick a commented out so code as an active xml element right it will not mm -hmm. pick up that one so it, yeah it it won't show you that so i think that's that's a good mm -hmm. idea i mean like that's the thing so let's see if we have that one right so i have a test api main 